Hello and welcome to the next video, where we would like to explain the secret behind the Pythagorean theorem. We just got to know the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we said, in many books it can be found graphically as follows. The squares are drawn directly on the triangle sides to make the connection clear. At this point we can say, the Pythagorean theorem is only a special case of a much larger mechanism or a more general principle. And we will show you this principle now. Let's take a concrete example. Let's take a triangle, which we also used in the last video with sides 3, 4 and 5. Then the areas are 9 square centimeters, 16 square centimeters and 9 plus 16, 25 square centimeters. And at this point please remember these values, 9, 16, and 25. And what do we do next? We are just looking at the triangle. And with this triangle we now draw the height. Namely the height for this green line here, for our side C. Which is here and has a length of 2.4 centimeters. We will see how the heights are calculated in the next video. This height divides the green line into two sections with lengths of 1.8 and 3.2. And what interests us now are the areas of the partial triangles. This one here, and this one here. We get the area of the left triangle by multiplying 1.8 by 2.4, divided by 2, and we get 2.16 square centimeters. And right here the same principle. 2.4, the height, times 3.2, divided by 2, and we get, 3.84 square centimeters. And as you can see, 3.84 plus 2.16 gives 6 square centimeters, the area of our entire triangle. And we can calculate that here as well. 3 times 4 is 12, half of which is 6. So our entire triangle is 6 square centimeters. The small one up here is 2.16, and the one right here is 3.84. Next we want to find out, what is the relationship between our triangle's area and the area C squared? Which is 25 square centimeters? Or in other words, with what factor do we need to enlarge our triangle so that it has the same area as our square? Equivalently, we can ask, 6 square centimeters times what, is equal to 25 square centimeters? And then you know, we can change the equation. We divide the 6 square centimeters over here. And then we get 25 divided by 6, and that's approximately 4.167. So if we multiply 6 by 4.167, we get 25 square centimeters, which then corresponds to the area of our square. What do we do next? We look at the 2.16. If we take the whole triangle and expand it to 25 square centimeters, how big is this left triangle now? We also have to multiply the 2.16 there by the factor 4.167, since this sub-triangle is expanded the same amount. Let's do that with the calculator. We enter 2.16 times 4.167 and get around 9 square centimeters. Next take our triangle on the right side, which is 3.84 square centimeters, and multiply that by the enlargement factor as well. 3.84 times 4.167 and we get 16 square centimeters rounded. And if you remember now, you see that the whole triangle is 25 square centimeters. The left triangle is 9 square centimeters and the right triangle is 16 square centimeters, and we recognize that the areas of the triangles correspond exactly to the areas of the squares of the smaller triangle. Here again is our small triangle with 6 square centimeters, and here we have the 9 square centimeters, here the 16, and here the 25, and if we now expand our yellow triangle, from 6 square centimeters to 25 square centimeters, we enlarge it, then we get the 25 square centimeters for the entire triangle, for the small triangle 9 square centimeters, and for the other triangle 16 square centimeters. The conclusion is that these square areas are nothing more than the enlarged triangular surfaces. Their shape was changed, but the area remained the same. And this results in the special case of the Pythagorean theorem. Or, to put it another way, this is the mechanism in place behind the Pythagorean theorem.
and here we also see that the two subareas must always add together to give the total area. Since the total area consists of the two parts, and that's the secret we wanted to show you. In the following we explain briefly why this works. The first piece of knowledge is that areas can have different shapes. For example, if we are given 36 square centimeters, these 36 square centimeters can be represented with different geometric figures, with different shapes. An example would be a triangle. But the 36 square centimeters might just as well be a rectangle. We could also take a circle. And we could draw any geometrical figure so that it has an area of 36 square centimeters. So we notice a very important rule. The area is not bound to the shape. So we can transfer these 36 square centimeters into the rectangular area. We can transfer the rectangular area into the circle. And the circle again into a triangular area. Next we have to go back to look at our right triangle. We do not have to represent 9 square centimeters as a square. Instead here we could have drawn our area as a circle or as a rectangle, a triangle or other shapes. But why do we take squares for the Pythagorean theorem? The answer is, the square has only one unknown in its area formula. Because the square's area is just a squared, and so if we want to know the area a, we just have to calculate the root of the area. For example, if we had created a rectangle here, we would have an area with six new unknowns. And if we had chosen other shapes as well as added sides A, B and C, it would still be three unknowns. The more complicated the geometric figure, the more difficult the area formula. However, as we see up here, our beautiful square has only one unknown. Therefore we have the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equal to c squared.